Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. I'm doing this poem as part of a contest, so you're gonna watch me live as I go through my thoughts as I'm coding. Uh, there'll be an explanation near the end, and for more context, there'll be a link below on the actual screencast of the contest. Uh, how did you do? Let me know how you do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here we go. Q4, max dot product of two subsequences. So this is, as soon as I saw it, I was like, okay, this feels like a dynamic poem poem. I refreshed it, I saw five people submitted already. And I was like, well, God, uh, it is what it is. Um, but, but yeah, but this is dynamic programming, uh, straight up. Uh, I looked at the N and the M's and it was 500. So I was like, okay, that should be fast enough. But the idea here, and some of this is just a lot of practice and, and recognizing the type of dynamic programming. And some of that is also just knowing dot products. Uh, I talk about this a little bit in the explanation, so feel free to skip ahead a little bit to that if you are interested in the explanation by then. Uh, but the idea is that given two lists, uh, you have a couple of things you want to do or you can do, which is uh, you do to the beginning of the list, which is you take one from the left and then you remove it, uh, or you take one to the on the list two and then remove it, or you take the top from the first from both of them and then do the operation, in this case, uh, a multiplication, and then solve it. Uh, and some of this does require having experience with dot products, I think. I mean, or at least in terms of solving it is very quickly, uh, because I don't think I even looked at the definition of dot product for this problem. Uh, I, even for lead code, I would be really surprised if they changed the definition of dot product, though that would have been funny, uh, and there would have been some debugging time later. But, but that's essentially what I did. Um, set up the, right now, I'm setting up the base case. Um, but yeah, but even then, even here, I knew that I had to worry about the case where the best answer is a negative number, uh, meaning that, so I'm trying to think about the base case, and that's what you see me pausing here for a couple of beats for, because um, I wasn't sure how to handle that case, because I knew that z um, zero is not a good return result in that case, uh, because it is bigger than your best number. Uh, so yeah, but I was like, okay, let's add, let's get this done first, and then, like, I think there are ways to think about it. So let's get this done, and then we'll figure out how to be a little bit better. And also, uh, I have terrible variable name for infinity because it should be negative infinity, I suppose, and that's part of the confusion. But yeah, but now I'm just doing the DP part of the transitions, which is uh, take the best of go, you know, i plus one to to move the index over. Or J plus one, moving that index over. Uh, the, and that's pretty much, um, and then now I was like, okay, so what am I doing, right? So what is the cost of taking the top and the bottom? And I was like, oh, it's just dot product. So we could just sum it by, uh, and I double checked <laughs> that my dot product definition at this point. Um, but yeah. And I just returned best, and that's pretty much it, uh, kind of. So I spent an extra minute trying to figure out what to do with the uh, negative case. Um, oh, yeah, I saw big negative numbers. I was like, oh, wait, uh, why am I getting big negative numbers? Oh, yeah, this, this should be max. Oops. Because that was just my infinity. Uh, that was like, okay, so I got the first two, so I know that now I'm confident about it, but I knew that I have to handle the negative one case, obviously. Uh, and this time, this contest, I did read the examples and not just submit without checking it. I was like, oh, how do I handle it? Okay, let's start with a started variable or dimension. Uh, there are other ways to talk to do this, and I talk about it in explanation, so we'll watch that for other ways of doing this. But I added a variable so that, um, that I pass through just to make sure that at least one item is... Uh, one sum is calculated. That's what I did, and that's what I submit. And as soon as I'm ready, and that's my contest. Uh, hang out with the other Larry for explanation, and just post retro thingy. Cool. Q4 max dot product of two subsequences. Uh, so this one I kind of knew it was dynamic programming already, um, because it, it is a very. As soon as I saw it, I knew that it was just like you know you keep. I mean, I, also I knew what a dot product was, so I didn't have to read the definition, uh, which helped a little bit. Um, 
but the idea is that uh, the idea is yeah, the idea is that you take you you're always given a given nums one and nums two. You're given two cho uh, a couple of choices at every step for the transition, which is that you take the the first number of both arrays and then you do the dot product. And they all and some of this requires having experience of the um, dot product and stuff like this in the sense that you you're able to re recognize that when you add stuff like they're independent of each other and stuff like this. So there's stuff that. Um, you only get from experience and or in knowing what a data dot product is and playing around with it. Um, but because I already did that, um, I was able to speed that through. But the idea is that because these are for that product, it's just a summation of a lot of products, um, and we could enumerate the products in this way with dynamic programming with the recursion, where we just either take the top of or the beginning of the two lists. And then you multiply them, and then you add it to the current sum, or you skip the left one, and then you know you check the right one uh, while keeping the other numbers the same, or you skip the one on the right, and then you keep the one on the left the same, and then you start, and then you take the max of the sum over that. Uh, I think I had, I knew that that was a way to do it, and then after that I was like, okay, let's look at the n, and n and m is less than five hundred, so I was like, okay, that should be fast enough. Uh, so I didn't really have to think about it anymore. Um, but yeah, but that's kind of my thing. I have some terrible variable names, but um, but yeah, so that's kind of my code. I mean, it's twenty lines of code, not, not even kind of. I use LRU cache for the memorization, but um, but the tricky part, and I knew this while I was coding it, was that uh, the tricky part was I didn't know how to handle um, the case where well the max is negative, so how do I change to do the base case right because. Uh, you want the base case, or I wanted the base case to be zero. So I think there may be other ways of handling this, and uh, I'm curious to see how how you or other people did, uh, just in general, because um, I think you could have maybe did some clevery thing where you do uh, like brute force one element so that, and then take that as your max. Uh, but but I did it this way instead. Uh, it's actually it probably takes way more space for that reason. But you could still keep it you know better uh, otherwise but yeah but here we we check to move the nums one index to the le uh, plus one we check the num uh, nums two index plus one and here we check um, we check taking the first number from each sequence and then summing it uh, and then incrementing from best and so they like I said the thing that I did which is a little I don't know if that's how people would do it uh, because there, I think there are a couple of ways to do this to handle the, the at least one number case but with the best number may be negative and that can only be the case if um, that can only be the case if you only take one number from one numbers num1 and nums2 and you can prove this because if there are two numbers that are negative or two combinations that are negative or something like that uh, then you can have just one Number that is negative, um, that is much is a is a hot is a max, is a bigger negative or a negative number that's closer to zero, right? Because if you have two negative numbers and you add them, then that's obviously going to be a a, a worse negative number. Uh, and if you have come, if the two numbers such that one is negative and then the other one is positive, then you just take the positive number and that will obviously make a number so that wouldn't come up. So you could. You can actually brute force the case, and then check that if, um, like, for i is equal to nums one, for j is equal to nums two. If, uh, and then keep the max of that going from the, uh, and if that max is smaller than zero, then you just take it because you can't do better. Um, but if you can do better, it would have been positive, and then you could have done stuff. Uh, but the way that I did it uh, was that uh, I was a little bit. I, I, so all that set, stuff that I just said, I was able, I think I had that idea, but I didn't want to prove that it was true. Uh, and sometimes, if you not, don't prove something, don't, I mean, the proving part takes effort, takes time, and sometimes your proofs can be wrong, right? So what I did instead was I did this thing called started variable, uh, which is also already part of the cache. But what I'm saying is that if if we at least added one number. Uh, that means if we took this path once, if we add at least one number to the list, 
then that means that it's a good list. And that means that um, our base case could be zero because that means that we already handled it. If, if we haven't started yet, then the answer is just going to be zero. Uh, go, or you want the answer to be, uh, actually this is negative infinity, so the, the variable name is terrible. But you want it to be infinity so that you never take that path. And that's kind of my, because you never want to consider that as the best answer. And that's essentially what I did. Um, and this is pretty straightforward. I did it in about four or five minutes, and a lot of people did as well, or a lot of the top people, uh, because, well, I mean, this is like really easy to, to write. Um, and I'm also sure that a lot of top people have already uh, <laughs> experienced uh, dot products like I have. Um, but yeah, uh, that's all I have for this 